question is, if somebody is doing a mitzvah, let's say he's donating, but he doesn't really want to donate, does he really still get the mitzvah? Better yet, we'll add to this question, if somebody, let's say, comes to a shiur Torah to learn Torah, but he doesn't really want to go. He doesn't really want to go. Does he still get a mitzvah? Should he still go? The Gemara says in a couple of places, Mimakom shelo lishma, ba lishma. That even if a person does a mitzvah without willpower, he doesn't want it. He doesn't want to do it. In fact, he hates it. HaKadosh Baruch Hu still wants him to do it because once he does it, he'll get the merit to see another mitzvah. And that other mitzvah, he'll have an opportunity again. And the more he does, the more he connects to these mitzvot, eventually what ends up happening is he starts liking them because he starts tasting the sweetness of the Torah. In the beginning, many times people learn Torah, they get inspired by uh, shiur or something like that, and they want to learn from the books. But the books are very different than a lecture. Why? Because in a lecture, I give you everything on a silver platter. I'll tell you where the source is, I'll tell you who said it, we connect all the different subjects, all the different books, everything is given to you on a silver platter. Now if you go take one of these gemarot and you start learning it on your own, you see that it's a world apart between the gemara and the shiu. Why? Because the gemara is going to talk about one particular subject for 10 hours and all the different walks of life about this particular subject and every possible question that you can think of and can't think of, they're going to ask and they're going to answer and they're going to tell you debates about it. But it's, in so many words, it's focusing and it's narrowing on one particular thing. It's not giving you anything on a silver platter. In fact, you have to toil in order to even understand what is even being said there. So it's a world apart. So many times... When people start learning the books, they say, oh, this is, it's not, it's not, where's the sweetness? Where's the sweetness the rabbi keeps talking about? Yeah, he's talking, he has all the information already. So yeah, for maybe for him it's free, but I'm just learning this thing. It's not sweet at all. It's bitter. It's hard. It takes me six hours to finish one page. Who wants to do this? So the Gemara says, exactly that. Mimakom shelo lishma barishma. Initially, you don't want to do it. Initially, it's bitter, but keep going. Why? The more you keep going, the closer you're going to get to that sweetness where eventually you're going to start seeing how things add up. And now that you've arrived at the right conclusion on your own, you feel like this now has become yours. You've become part of the Torah, not just a reader of Torah. Like if you read math, if you learn science, you do all these things, okay, so you're knowledgeable about certain things. But when you learn Torah, the right way, the Torah becomes part of you. And that is the sweetest thing that could ever exist in the world. So everyone needs a little bit of shirim, a little bit of the actual uh, uh, sfarim. Obviously, there's different levels of learning, there's different levels of shirim, there's different levels of sfarim. But the point being is that even if a person does not want to do a mitzvah, whether it be learning Torah or giving tzedakah, whatever it is, he should go and she should go and do it. Why? Number one, Hashem said so. That's already enough of a reason. Number two, it's good for you. Yeah, but I don't like it. It's good for you. Do it. Antibiotics, you don't like it, right? It tastes disgusting. All of these technological investments, they still haven't figured out to make the antibiotic taste like anything edible. But guess what? If you have an infection, you have to take it. Why? It's good for you. Why? Because if you, if you don't take it, you're going to die from the infection. So sometimes we have to take something because the Kadosh Baruch Hu said it and that's enough of a reason. But sometimes we are stubborn people. We need something extra. Okay, it's good for you. When is it going to be good for me? Trust me. It's good for you. It's just that you're not going to see the benefits of the cure right away. It may take a little time. It may take a day. It may take a week. It may take a month. But point being is eventually you're going to see it. Eventually you're going to get it. And when a person does the will of Hashem simply because Hashem said it, they'll eventually taste the sweetness of the law. Now, as we learned the other day one, from the uh, Chazonish, is that one of the most difficult things for a uh, person to, uh, to overcome in his acquiring of the sweetness of the Torah is the fact that he himself is holding himself back. 
because he or she has terrible character traits. She wants to learn a shiur Torah, but still walk around with a half a half a half a clothes. You know, she wants to learn Torah and be holy and read Tehillim, but she doesn't want to cover her head. He wants to learn Torah, but he also wants to watch basketball. He also wants to curse like a truck driver. He also wants to, uh, you know, do all types of things that Hashem says is forbidden. And he has bad character traits. And the Chazonish, thank you, excuse me, it's And the Chazonish says these flawed character traits are what's holding you back from the sweetness of the Torah. So yes, you can still get some sweetness, some sweetness, without perfecting your character traits. But to get the ultimate level of sweetness, you have to perfect your character traits. Why? Because you have to make your physical body a vessel for this pure spirituality that HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants to gift you. So the way to do it is by doing things that Hashem said, even if you don't want to. B'Shem Hashem Nasev and Atzliach, we're very excited to offer you the new Bezat Hashem app 3.0. It's a newer, faster app, full of Torah, lots of Kedusha by uh, the Shurim that we do, myself, Rabbi Ephraim, Rav Chaim, uh, where you'll have uh, also newer features where you're able to use the app uh, while you're using other applications on your phone. You'll be able to share the, uh, the lectures directly from the app. You'll be able to donate online and support our cube and our Torah work that we're doing. And the most exciting feature is that you'll be able to actually ask questions directly on the app and get answers from the rabbis directly from the app. This is something unprecedented, and Baruch Hashem will be able to offer it. Thank you again for all of your support. Check it out. Make sure you have the kosher Torah that uh, will re-energize your neshama each and every single day. Call to B'chavat